as we continue on the last stretch of the Raiders season, we simulate a game against the Minnesota Vikings where we actually win the game. It's been so long, not since I believe the Green Bay Packers game have we won a, a football game, but we did it as Aiden O'Connell and DeAndre Carter hook up for over 100 yards and it's a great day for the offense for once and might hurt our chances of getting the number one draft pick as we get our third win of the season, but we're just happy to have a positive sign as we continue with Aiden O'Connell as a starting quarterback and we have some Thursday night football action and it's against Justin Herbert and the Chargers as Herbert three touchdowns three picks last week but can we maybe string together a win streak maybe do something to get this season ending on a positive note I, I don't know we'll see Raiders and Chargers is next so here is Aiden O'Connell coming out. And O'Connell had a really nice week last week against the Vikings. Not so great against the Chiefs, but again, he showed us more positive signs as a quarterback for this team than Jimmy Garoppolo. And we're more than happy to roll with him for the rest of the season. And as O'Connell will drop the throw on second down and almost gets picked off on his first drop back. And it's going to be third and nine. O'Connell gets Jacoby Myers and Jacoby Myers for the 47 yard line. A little behind him, but able to still fit it in as Jacobs will have a run just back to the line of scrimmage and Aiden O'Connell will spread the field and will roll into pressure, sacked. And it's gonna be third and 15. O'Connell to the air, hit by Bosa again. And it's gonna be a punting situation in two minutes. We turn it to the Chargers, who have a very dynamic offense. It's going to be Justin Herbert throwing to guys like Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, and Quinton Jefferson. And speaking of Quinton Jefferson, there he is. The rookie from TCU has a great gain. And then there's Keenan Allen. And Keenan Allen has it to the 16. At running back, they field Isaiah Spiller. And it's going to be a penalty, a false start. There's no Austin Eckler. Eckler is injured. But Spiller has filled in very nicely for this Chargers offense and has had a bit of a breakout year. And he is getting to show what he is capable of, and he is capable of putting it in the end zone. Isaiah Spiller, touchdown, Chargers. And it's a familiar sight as in the Chiefs game and in other games. It's not really hard for teams to score in their opening possession against us as Jacobs will take a carry and then run right into Khalil Mack as second down and O'Connell his he's thrown but he's got Michael Mayer wide open and even though it wasn't the best of passes it was enough for Mayer to get his hands on it and that's all we really ask for these days with a quarterback play for the Raiders as catch there for three yards and it'll be second and seven Josh Jacobs with the draw play he'll gain three more and Derwin is down so hopefully he can maybe miss some time we'd love to play without Derwin on the field as Josh Jacobs can't hang on it's going to be fourth down, and this team went for it a lot against the Chiefs. Had a lot of success, but not success on this one. They were able to convert three times against the Chiefs on fourth down, but oh, of one so far today is a lot of time for Herbert. And eventually someone's going to get wide open, and that's Isaiah Spiller. That's no pass rush. And the pass rush has got to do a better job than that. It's an incomplete pass. The ball is knocked away. Spiller trying to get a second touchdown. That won't happen as he doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 11. Herbert to throw. And it's going to be end zone. Touchdown. That's Quinton Johnson. And it's going to be an early 14-0 deficit for the Raiders. And I'm just going to hope things don't get ugly here as O'Connell will hand it off to Josh Jacobs. And... Jacobs will have eight yards. It seems like Jacobs is one of the only players still uh, trying this late in the season because I know one thing's for sure. This offensive line is not trying, especially the right side as Jermaine Illuminor is getting his butt kicked. And speaking of his butt kicked, you've seen someone get mowed down in the middle there as we go three and out, basically. And say a Spiller get brought down by Marcus Epps, but he gets to the 47-yard line and Herbert to throw over the middle. Missed him. Keenan Allen had it, but overthrown and a rare miss from Herbert, but Herbert's not going to miss that one. But fortunately for us, it's incomplete as Herbert will roll left.
left and throw out of bounds and the Raiders, believe it or not, we get a stop. We might be at our own one yard line though after a very great punt. As we're at the two now, handoff, and Khalil Mack is bringing down Jacobs. And will he go third straight handoff? No, we will not, as O'Connell out of his own end zone, incomplete. And three and out, and that field position is looking great for Herbert. But it's not going to be helped there as Divine Diablo shoots the gap and gets a sack. And no throw quick, and Herbert misses third and 17. Raiders. And they get two stops in a row. They go screen, spiller. He gets a decent bit of yards, but we get the ball back, and we have two straight stops. And DeAndre Carter, the former Charger, will have a bubble screen for seven yards. And O'Connell will hand Josh Jacobs up the middle. And Jacobs first and ten now. New set of downs. O'Connell will get picked off, and O'Connell turned over by Asante Samuel Jr. And that's going to be Charger football right back. And Herbert over the middle. And that went through the hands of Gerald Everett, I believe. And Herbert now is going to take a read option. And Justin Herbert trying to surprise this Raider defense. A six-yard run. And he will throw now. That's going to be caught by Keenan Allen. And Allen's got a first down at the 13-yard line. And Spiller has a big hole open up over the middle of the field. Corey Lindsley working this interior D-line as Herbert play action, everyone bit, touchdown Trey McKitty, and it's 21-0. Herbert is dicing the defense up, and Aiden O'Connell is throwing it at a defensive lineman and throwing it far out of the reach of a receiver as now it's third and ten immediately, and he's going to get sacked. He got the ball off. It's incomplete. Looked like maybe a sack, but... Doesn't matter, so it's going to be Charger football regardless, as now it's going to be Herbert throwing short. Gerald Everett breaks a tackle, breaks two tackles, and Gerald Everett, he's going to go all the way, isn't he? And it's a missed, and Nate Hobbs couldn't bring him down. And just like that, Gerald Everett, two tackles broken, and he's a pretty fast tight end, and he's able to outrun the rest of the defense, and... Suddenly it's 28-0. Josh Jacobs on the carry. I, I don't even know what we're supposed to do as it's been awful. Jacobs has a short game. Fourth and four. We're going to go for it. And when things are ugly, they, you know, we're going to hope we can turn it around as we're able to at least convert there. Michael Mayer over the middle and maybe we're moving the football a little bit maybe getting something going as Jacobs finds a hole and Jacobs gets brought down but he has seven yards so you go play action now and we have a man deep that's Jacoby Myers but he has a foot out of bounds as he catches it and it's not going to be completed we still get the first down though so the drive carries on and O'Connell will throw quick bubble screen Carter hit fumble and the Chargers pick it up, and this is a disastrous first half. Deep ball, Marcus Peters swats it away, and we just are getting absolutely dominated right now. Third and five, screen set up, everyone runs in, and Isaiah Spiller gets the first down, and with four to go, I mean, the Chargers are moving again, and Spiller has a big run. That's 20 yards. I'm struggling to find the words for this defense right now, but uh, to put it nicely, it is not good. And the offense is barely even better, if that is. There's another big play from Herbert. Will they score once again? It's going to be a drop. Maybe we can hold them to a field goal. It would only make us down 31-0. It's incomplete. Third and ten. Herbert will step up and throw out the back of the end zone. And there's that stop. But like I said, 31-0 to zero in the first half. Aiden O'Connell will roll right and will throw. And it's just way off. O'Connell wants more of the air, and I, it seems like the only passes we're able to complete are just checkdowns to Josh Jacobs, and good for Josh Jacobs' fantasy owners, but 
literally not good for anybody else. I, I don't know what this offense can really do outside of Josh Jacobs as it's caught on a little dump off four yards. And maybe we can put some points up on the board before half. And there's another Josh Jacobs dump off. But that one was floated out and almost taken back the other way as O'Connell now on third down throwing. Trey Tucker caught first down. They gave it to him. Illuminor goes down, but... It's not like he was playing good anyway. As we go deep for Tucker, incomplete. J.C. Jackson in coverage, second and 10. 140 to go. O'Connell in the face of pressure gets it to Tucker and it's knocked away, third and 10. O'Connell back to the air, we'll have Carter and that's a first down, okay. There's something positive, something nice as O'Connell will roll left and will throw across the body to Michael Mayer and I can say that was a nice throw, but didn't really gain us a whole lot as Aiden O'Connell is just unraveling, I feel like. It's, he's just getting so flustered. It's third down, and he overshoots his man, and it's going to be fourth down. I mean, what does a field goal even do in this situation? We're going to go for it. O'Connell throws across the field, and it's incomplete. It's halftime, and I can confidently say that was one of the worst halves of football I've ever watched. The Chargers have over 300 yards of offense, and we have 10 more plays and about half the yard. So, um, I don't even got much to say in the second half. Let's just try not to lose by 70. As we get into the second half, I will, you know, give you the spoiler alert. Shockingly, we do not make a 31-0 comeback, but I will stick to... Showing you the key drives, key highlights, key moments, and not waste your time too much as I don't think you really want to sit here and watch a blowout forever, but as we talk about the state of this team, it will mean we fall to, I believe, 3 and 11 with just a few games left on the season, and it really shows just how much work this team really needed and how bad this team needs help. Um, you know, as we look closer to the draft, we're going to be looking for a quarterback, whether that be in the draft, through trade, free agency, whatever it is, as we see Herbert getting the ball to the four-yard line and really punching a touchdown. we got Joshua Kelly coming into the game, and Kelly, that's going to be a touchdown. Chargers, as Chargers take a 38-0 lead, but like I said, we're going to be looking for a quarterback, of course, and... I think some other areas that we need are wide receiver, of course, now with the, you know, absences at the wide receiver positions following the Hunter Renfro and DeAndre Hopkins trade. We're going to be looking for a receiver. I think the right side of the offensive line really needs some help. And on defense, I can say we need just about everything except edge rush. But I think on defense, we can say the positives. Um, Tyree Wilson should get better. And I think Max Crosby is still great as Quinton Johnson. This was a nice play as Johnson gets a touchdown. And Chargers are up 45-0. to zero. And I, I can also say a big surprise has been Divine Diablo has been really nice this season. I think he's been the only you know, player that really broke out for us this season. I don't really think we've had any other breakouts. But the, let me say fourth down conversion. The third quarter is coming to an end, and Herbert is going to fire one, and that's going to be caught to the three-yard line, and as the fourth quarter gets underway, Max Crosby tries to chase him down, and Tyree Wilson will finish him off, but it'll be a quick throw. Keenan Allen, touchdown, 52-0, to zero. and will we have an opportunity to maybe put some points up on the board as Amir White He's been seeing his playing time diminish quite a bit over the season, but uh, with this game basically being over, there's no point in risking a Josh Jacobs injury, so we're going to let Zamir White take a couple of carries as we throw a quick outside. DeAndre Carter gets stopped, but we just want a touchdown, just something to be positive about, be happy about. It's fourth down and three. We're going to go for the touchdown, of course, and O'Connell will miss him. And that'll put a bow on this one as the Chargers win 52-0. to zero. A complete shutout, a complete embarrassment for the Raiders, and I don't have the stat sheets in front of me, but I would have to imagine this is one of, if not maybe the biggest loss in franchise history. 
as this Raiders team really showcased to the world just how bad they are right now. As there wasn't a single aspect, facet, player who really did anything for us. But thankfully, we didn't have to spend too long in the second half of this game. And we can get some more interesting and fun stuff as we are one episode away from the season finale. And then it'll be the off season. Now let's get into the draft update, though. Let's get some interesting players going. This is your college football update in the end of the regular season for the world of college football, and a little bit has happened. Now let's talk about a little move down. You see there, Alabama upset in the Iron Bowl by Auburn. A big win for Auburn as they shoot the number 15 in the polls, and Alabama drops to number 9, ending their hopes and dreams at a playoff appearance. And not only that, they miss out on the SEC championship as with the tiebreaker, LSU gets to play Georgia. And Georgia will have a chance to lock up their spot in the college football playoffs with a victory. And in the other game, Michigan and Ohio State, maybe the biggest matchup in that rivalry history, was an absolute disappointment as Ohio State was thoroughly, handily demolished. Their offense was incapable of moving the football. We knew Ohio State had a great defense with Trey Dutch and company, and we, we knew that their defense was going to be something that was going to be really good, but they hadn't really been tested this season. Their biggest win so far had been against number 15 Penn State at the time. So, I mean, there were a lot of people saying they uh, wrote a cupcake schedule all the way to a potential college football playoff appearance, but... Now that college football playoff appearance is very much in question, as I can tell you that there is a little typo right there. Oregon has two losses. They're 10 and 2. Minor typo there, but we had some championship implications for the conference title game of the Big 12. Iowa State was able to bring down TCU, and because of that win, the tiebreaker gives them the second slot in the conference championship, and they will be taking on Texas. So that's the Big 12 title game in the Big Ten. Michigan will not be facing Ohio State because they are in the same division. Michigan will instead be facing a seven-win Iowa team. So Big Ten was a little weak this year, but Iowa, we'll see if they can maybe pull off an upset of a century. Georgia, like we said, will be taking on LSU. Clemson will be getting a rematch against North Carolina. Clemson was already able to take down North Carolina this season. We'll see if they can do it again. And in the Pac-12 title game, I think the game with the biggest implications for the college football playoff, it is Washington, Oregon, the rematch. Oregon at 10-2, and two, Washington at 11-1. And, and Washington, it's going to be hard to dispute that they deserve a spot in the college football playoff if they are able to take down Oregon. Their resume would be so much stronger than Ohio State. So both with a one loss and a conference title belt on Washington's side. I think you give the nod to Washington. Now where things get interesting is what if Oregon wins? Do you give Oregon a two loss team a college football playoff spot? I don't know. Oregon is the hottest team in college football though. We'll see if they can keep their momentum going and college football championship weekend. It's going to be a fun one. With the college season being over, there are no more players to speak of because there's really not anything else going on aside from the championship games and the bowl games afterwards. Next episode, we will cover the Heisman winner, the bowl games, what happened, obviously, and who made the college football playoffs. And then we will, you know, not really hear much until the draft. But other than that, we will simulate this game against the Chiefs as promised. And the outcome of that Chiefs game is a whole lot better than the game against the Chargers, as obviously it was going to be better than 52-0, but we were able to come close to a victory. Only a three-point loss in overtime against Patrick Mahomes. We'll take that. Josh Jacobs had a huge game, and Aiden O'Connell had maybe his best game. So, I mean, after a 52-0 loss, and then going on the road to face the best quarterback in the league, I think we responded well. Still a loss, so I guess that stinks, but I mean, we're well on our way to a top five draft pick, and at 3-12, and 12, the final episode of the regular season, we will be taking on a 10-5 and 5 Colts team. We own their first round pick, so I mean, we could help our first round pick out, but 
We are competing for that number one pick. It's us, the Commanders, and the Bucks squaring off to try to get that pick. But we'll see if we can maybe steal a win to close the season. See you in the next one.